Well, it all comes down to this. Before we get into it, please subscribe to help build my kingdom so you don't miss a new video. Everyone's favorite not actually a video game character character is back after falling off a roof and being taken into the care of the Bowery King. John Wick has recovered and he wants revenge. Again, what kind of revenge, you ask? Well, he kills the elder of the table right off the bat since he wanted his wedding ring back. Because as we all know, John Wick is a man of simple needs. Killing the elder doesn't end anything, of course, and there are consequences to come as the price on John's head increases and the table becomes more desperate than ever to eliminate the Baba Yaga. The table has tasked the Marquis Vincent de Gramont with eliminating John and his scorched earth tactics sees everyone John has had contact with fall under the table's crosshairs. Winston's Continental is destroyed, and many of John's friends are marked for death, and the only way out of all of this is an old custom that only just now makes an appearance. A duel. Should John win the duel, his demands will be met, no matter what they are. So John just has to survive more assassins than brown people speaking foreign that Arnold Schwarzenegger went through back in the 80s, and he may yet truly find his freedom. You don't often see movies with a simple premise handled with some amount of care, but when you do, you get John Wick. A simple premise executed with B-plus effort, resulting in now four movies with a possible fifth on the way. And why is that? Well, it's a modern film with old-school thought. It doesn't try to shove an agenda down our throats, it doesn't treat us as morons, and it just tries to be the best of what it is. Case in point, the action sees a bit of refinement here. It is John Wick, after all, this is what we all came to see. Parabellum was a sloppy mess like a Japanese schoolgirl tripped into a room full of octopi, but Chapter 4 seems to have hit the gym. Much of the action is tighter in the way it is filmed, and the choreography doesn't make it so obvious that Keanu is now pushing 60. The hotel fight specifically towards the end is definitely the highlight of the film, captured in multiple no-cut sequences spliced together at certain points that by the time it's over, you'll feel just as exhausted as Philippides. Also, Dragon Breath Rounds. Those are awesome. And the new cast is welcome as well. Donnie Yen's Kane is easily one of the best performances in any of these movies, and Hiroyuki Sonata is always a gem to see on screen. They even got Scott Adkins in a fat suit to give a good performance, so if you had Boyka versus Neo on your bingo card, I guess you win. If I had to pick who I think is the most underutilized, though, I would say it's Bill Skarsgård. Everyone in this movie is a fine actor and gives good performances, of course, and Skarsgård is no schlub, but he basically just stands there and does nothing, like he's posing for Men's Warehouse. Also, let me put this concern to rest. If any of you are worried that Rina Yawasama's Akira is going to be the girl boss that takes over the film and carries John Wick, no, no, that does not fucking happen at all. In fact, not only does she get overpowered and thrown around like a ragdoll a few times, her combat style is grappling intensive, relying on her agility rather than brute strength. Think a more believable Black Widow. Her her character is a welcome addition to action movies since the now cliched 90 pound soaking wet woman folding a guy my size like an empty soda can has been driven into the ground harder than Thelma and Louise. So all is said and good, right? Well, this is a John Wick movie, so eh, kind of, since there is surprisingly little to say, but no. The John Wick series is certainly entertaining, but not the strongest narratively, and Chapter 4 continues this trend by making up rules out of thin air to allow the plot to happen. For example, there is now the special duel clause I mentioned before that was never brought up before in any of the films, stating that whoever wins is guaranteed to have their demands met no matter what they are. This can include anything from achieving your freedom, which would have been real convenient in Chapter 2, or to have the table bathe you in a pool full of jello while watching Golden Girls for the rest of your days. Take your pick! All said and done, by the end of this one, so much more has been added to the world or retconned, it's no wonder this film pushes an almost three hour runtime. I love awesome action as much as the next person, but you aren't trying to show me a new world like Middle Earth. This is an action film in current Earth. <laughs> so just cut out the excess, trim the fat, and present the best fights. Or take the fight at the Ark. There are dozens of men 
and more gunfire than the Battle of Fallujah, and none of the civilians think it's a good idea to stop driving in a circle and leave? Also, as I hold action movies to a higher standard than most, this movie falls somewhere in between Chapter 2 and 3. This is the fourth movie, after all, and seeing Keanu Reeves still performing as well as he does while pushing 60 is enough motivation to get anyone in the gym. But he is pushing 60. I know both he and his character are supposed to be exhausted, and it does show. However, whether it be Keanu not quite able to keep up with his younger and more versatile stuntmen, or the fact that his suit rides so high that he looks like a bow-legged frog wearing skinny jeans, while the man is still giving it his all, there are quite a few moments where the stuntmen just stand there wiggling around like an antsy zombie waiting for Keanu to hit his marks. Just like in Parabellum, I lost count of the number of times Keanu does the same takedowns, the same gun fu, or whatever, sure, and repetition isn't inherently an issue, but when you perform a jujitsu takedown in the middle of a gunfight, surrounded by guys all looking to kill you in particular, it is a bit more difficult to extend my already suspended disbelief. And that's not to mention every time somebody with a gun already drawn walks from off-camera into screen and into disarming range. Oh, and let's not forget John Wick's tailored suit with the finest of plot armor. Is it lined with mithril? The dude takes more shots than 50 Cent in a hundred lifetimes and brushes it off like it's loose change. Like, that already pushes the bounds of believability, so add on getting hit by cars at full speed and an almost instant replay of the end of Parabellum at one point, and you've triggered my inner critic. Also, we're four movies in, and you still still think I'm going to believe anyone in this universe has an Oompa Loompa in the NBA's chance at taking down John Wick? I understand, yes, tens of millions of dollars is still a lot of money even in today's economy being burnt down by the retard in chief, but how have none of these people considered it might be wise to try to not take out John Wick? The dude runs through underlings like Doomguy does demons and you think you have a fucking chance? I'd sooner believe I could beat Francis Nagano in a fight. So, there you have it. John Wick 4 is better than Parabellum, not quite as good as Chapter 2, but still an overall fun movie to enjoy at the theater. And I do believe this film should be supported in the theater. The phrase, you vote with your wallet, is a true statement after all, and it is far better than the underwhelming 65, the snore fest that was Cocaine Bear, and the rest of the trash that's come out this year. So go enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.